That's right, we're back again. It's me and Mr. Truck at another truck stop. And Kent, I see you have a Ford 250 that has, well, pretty much stock suspension. So tell them what we're doing on the next episode of the Fast Lane Truck. We're gonna take this new F250 and retrofit it to Autoflex air replacement suspension. And that's because air suspension is the way of the future. Semis have it. Exactly. The new Ram has it. And within a couple of days, this truck will have it coming up next on the Fast Lane Truck. on toy and trailers is how much the truck squats. Of course, that means the headlight shoots in the air, it means your back end comes down, you're not level, and that means you're not using your brakes the most efficiently way. The, the system on these trucks is a Hotchkiss leaf spring. It's been around for 100 years. And the truck manufacturers, they keep making them longer, making them wider, and make it squat more. Well, then every time the new truck comes along, it's got a higher payload, a higher trailer capacity, and you get more squat. So, you know, semis figured this out 30, 40 years ago to put an air suspension on their trucks. And their headlights don't shine in the air, they don't squat when they're loaded, they stay level. And all that helps the performance of the truck, whether it's braking, handling, the whole situation of the truck, and that's the future. You know, as we see with Ram now announcing they're going to have air suspension coming out this winter in the 2014 model. We know it's finally going to come along, so what we're doing here is we're going to be installing Autoflex, a complete spring replacement air suspension, and to see how much difference it is between the Hotchkiss Leaf Spring factory setup that's on this truck and what uh, the Autoflex uh, trailing arm airbag suspension will do for it. So we're going to retrofit an air suspension on this F-250, run it through a gauntlet of tests before we do it, and run it through the same gauntlet after we do it and find out which is better. Alright Ken, as always, we had to weigh the truck to find out exactly what we're dealing with. So um, the F-250 alone, in case you're wondering, is 7,700 pounds, and with the trailer it's 17,540 pounds, and I've done the math and that means that your trailer weighs 9,840 pounds. Okay. So, with a 9,840 pound trailer behind us, we're going to do a series of tests before we put on the air suspension and afterwards. And those tests are going to measure basically the dynamic performance of the pickup. So we'll start with the headlights. What are you going to do with that? Well, we're going to see just how much difference the angle of the headlight is. That's always a problem with trailers when they're loaded with, with trailers. Uh, on the trucks, the squat that it does to the rear end of the truck, whether it's a gooseneck or a bumper pull, changes where your headlight angle is. And you know how it is, you don't really want to be stargazing with your headlights, you don't want people flashing you because your headlights are shining in their eyes. And we're going to just see how much this trailer does for the headlight angle. And the maximum capacity of this F-250 is 12,000 pounds, so we're well below that. So, uh, you know, it, it, uh, that'll show us what an average trailer might be on this kind of a truck with the headlight angle. Now we also just measured uh, the squat. You can check that out right now. So, oh look at that, exactly six inches, I'm gonna call it. Oh, yeah, six inches. Okay. So we got six inches of squat without the air suspension, with the standard uh, leaf springs. Right. Yeah, it sounds good. That's, uh, and now this truck is squatting more than you would want it to. It's certainly not level with what it would be uh, close to the maximum of weigh the trailer, but I think it's close to 12,000, which is what this truck is rated for. It's just kind of weird. Gooseneck is rated 12,000 on this truck, and the bumper pull is rated 12,500. So how, where they come up with that, I don't know. Usually they're a little higher than Gooseneck, but... So well, that's strange. Yes, it is. And it turned out that we're sitting about six inches above the top of the wheel well um, from the wheel, and that's pretty low. I mean, it's coming down quite a bit. Yes, that's, uh, that'll be in. We'll get that data right away because uh, when the trailer's off there, we'll see what the uh, unloaded truck looks like, and it'll be a little above level. It's below level now, so uh, that many inches, of course, that translates to the headlights, and that translates to pinion angle. Most important thing is, you know, how much your drive shaft is going into your rear differential. That angle, that causes wheel hot, that causes 
a lot of vibration if your angle of your drive shaft is too level. And then the last three tests, which are my favorite, are we're going to measure zero to 60 time, we're going to measure 60 to zero, so we're going to do a brake test, and we're going to do a visual solemn test to see just how much lean there is with the current leaf spring setup versus the air suspension setup. Uh, just visually, so we're going to mount a camera on the bottom of the truck and we're going to see how much the thing is flexing left to right. Um, and that should give us a good sense of uh, how much benefit we're getting out of installing air suspension. Do you think that these numbers will improve? I think they will because it's all about how much control we have on that rear axle. If you have axle wrapped by the torsion from the drive shaft pushing the leaf springs down, that's axle wrap, that causes you to lose traction, causes the wheel hop that you get. And we're hoping that the air suspension will solve those problems and give you better traction, which will improve your zero to 60 time, your fuel mileage, and your braking distance if you can control that axle better. Now, without the trailer, we're at just under two and a half inches from where we were before. So basically, the truck is now pointing two and a half inches higher with the trailer than it is without the trailer. Right. right. So you're you're you know you're going like this as yeah. opposed to straight out. And that's measured just about four feet between the wall exactly. and the truck? Exactly, yep. So you think about another 30 feet where your oncoming cars would be, and that's going to be up there that's quite know, a bit three that, or four times more than that. Yeah, yeah, two and a half inches obviously gets much higher. Yes, so those guys that you're aiming at coming down the road may not appreciate it. You know what would solve that? Self-leveling lights. Yeah, I thought about that. That might be their next answer. I hope they think about suspension and not self-leveling lights, because <laughs> I know what you mean. It'd be nice to have both. <laughs> yeah, there you go. On this Ford F-250, the stock suspension is what most trucks have. This is a Hotchkiss leaf spring design. So you have leaf springs with a hanger on each end that's actually bolted or riveted to the frame. And then you have a shackle on the back that as the spring compresses, it goes rearward. This is the same system that trucks have had for 100 years. And that's, you know, it's an old system. And basically, truck manufacturers, all they've done is make the leaf springs a little wider, a little longer to make them ride better. Well, naturally, when you make the spring longer, it's going to squat more. And each new truck model comes out with a heavier payload capacity, a heavier, tra a heavier trailer capacity, and of course they squat more. So this is uh, one of the main concerns which we talked about with the pinion angle and all those things that change when you've got a squatting truck, your headlights shooting in the air, and your brakes not being as effective if the axle's not effective. So it's this suspension that we're going to replace, and the new uh, Autoflex suspension will fit exactly where this leaf spring is. It'll fit in the same hangers on each end.